Mercy there was great, and grace was free. Pardon they were multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Thank God for grace. Put your hands together and praise the Lord. Oh, we can praise him with a loud voice. We can honor him with our lips. We can praise him from our hearts. Marvelous grace. Amen. What a marvelous, marvelous ministry we just received. Amen. We should be full to the brim. Amen. Walking out of here differently. I'd like you to join me again in honoring the lady of this house, the pastor. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Wilson doing a great job. You can raise your voices another. That's right. Amen. 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 To all of the pastors and leaders and evangelists and all of you who are in ministry, I greet you. I guess it's afternoon by now in the name of Jesus. But hug somebody and tell them the grace of the Lord is in your life. The grace of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. It's good to be back at Raw. The Lord has given you longevity. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. What year is this? 21 years. Amen. Tell your neighbor, we have grown up, we have grown up, 21 years, amen, amen. amen. There's so many products and so many offerings. If you have any money left, amen, you can stop by the tape table, join and put this along with your other um, offerings. We have some, some offerings for you, DVD and CDs that we know will be a blessing to you. But I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles, and I'm not going to hold you long, to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 18. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 18. <clears throat> and I'm reading from the King James Version, Revelation, chapter 3, and the 18th verse. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do appear do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see so far the text and the title of this sermon, I don't know about other ministers, but it always gets a little tricky as what to say in order to bring you into the text, but let's go shopping for gold. Let's go shopping for gold. You know, the book of Revelation has always been for men a very difficult book to interpret, along with Daniel and Ezekiel because this book is a, an apocalyptic literature, meaning it is unveiling or disclosing hidden things known only to God. I know many of us would like to think that we have special revelation to add, but there's no other revelation than what's in the book. So the book of Revelation is added along with the other a literature such as Daniel, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Zechariah. And this particular book uses a lot of symbols and images and numbers. And these 
images and numbers were given to the church at a time when persecution was very severe. And in order to get the message to the churches, they had to couch it in symbolic language. For example, this, the Christmas song that we sing at Christmas, you know, on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. That's not a secular song. That's a religious song. Every one of those symbols represent a part of the faith. But they had to code it so that the enemy wouldn't know it. All right. Just Google it and find out if you don't believe me. All right. So Revelation is filled with a lot of symbolism because it was written to inform and strengthen believers in the face of persecution. But even though it's loaded with symbolism, the message is very clear that God is in control. And no matter what the devil does, he cannot frustrate the purpose of God. Who wrote this? John the Beloved. He was a circuit minister. We called him traveling evangelist. And he ministered at Ephesus, Pergamon, Smyrna, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. He was busy circling around and strengthening the churches. What was the occasion? The occasion is that John wrote to the angel of the churches, the seven churches in Asia Minor, meaning the pastor of the churches or the leaders of the churches for the congregation. So he wrote to the pastors so that the pastors can confront challenge and comfort the churches. Where did he get the message? Straight from Jesus. Who gave them the message? Jesus himself. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So he, you know, he, he, he had a message to each church, but we want to just focus very quickly on the last church, the church at Laodicea. And Laodicea was a very wealthy city during the Roman period. It was so wealthy that one of the uh, emperors was able to confiscate a lot of gold out of that city. It was a city that was destroyed in AD 660 by an earthquake. And when the Roman Empire offered to give them money, they said, no, we don't need money. We can build the city ourselves. That's how wealthy they were. This city was known for its black wool industry. And it was also known for its special powder to cure cataracts and glaucoma. So they were advanced in industry, they were advanced in medicine, and they also had a sophisticated banking system. So this church was surrounded and inculcated and couched in wealth, couched in accomplishment, couched in science, couched in intelligence. And it was this church that the message came. And the charge is that I know your works, in verse 15, that thou art neither cold nor hot, and I would prefer that you would choose to be cold. I can deal with cold or hot. One of the greatest diseases of the church is lukewarmness. One of the greatest diseases of any relationship is indifference. And that's what lukewarmness means. It means I'm neither here nor there. I'm speaking to you, but there's no response from you. I'm giving to you, but there is nothing that you're giving back. It's a place of neutrality. And if God be God, then follow him. If Baal be Baal, then follow him. But there is no room in a church of Jesus Christ of, for lukewarmness, tepidness. He said, because you're lukewarm, I now will have to spew you out of my mouth. 
So Matthew 24 and 12, let's just look at a few scriptures and we're going to move on. Hear God's word, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Joshua 24 and 15, it says, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers serve beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, for far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord, our God himself, who brought us out of Egypt from the land of slavery and performed these great signs. So the challenge was... If God be God, then serve him. James 1 and 4 says, Perseverance must finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask of God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. So the Lord has given us the ability to respond to him. He says, but when he asks, he must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. So says the living Bible. So what was the charge? You're tepid, you're lukewarm, you're neutral. You're neither here nor there, and now I have to deal with you. What is the consequence? For every action, there is a consequence. And the enemy always makes us think that we can do what we want to do, but there is no consequence. Our children get in trouble because they feel like there is no consequence. People live above the law because they feel like there is no consequence. What is the consequence? The cause of indifference. What caused them to be indifferent? What caused them to be lukewarm? And the cause is self-conceitedness. Thank God for the apostle that taught before. He was all in my sermon. Relying on self. And the 21st century church has learned the art of relying on self self-conceitedness and self-delusion they felt as if they had everything that they needed and you can hear it in their language now now you didn't hear them speak but you heard jesus sp speak their heart who is diagnosing this problem who is exposing this issue not john but jesus himself and there's nothing hidden the bible said that he's sitting in heaven and he's sitting and there's a sea of glass the bible said all things are open and naked before him he said to nathaniel before you came i saw you so there's nothing hidden from him and he is exposing because you said maybe not in words but in your actions Maybe not in words, but thoughts. Because you says, I am rich and increased in goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched. So the thought, the high thoughts, the high thoughts, the high thoughts. The Bible said that God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. There's a spirit of arrogance in the 21st century church. We're arrogant in our speech. We're arrogant in our demand to God. We're arrogant in our prayers. We're arrogant in the way we live. We're just arrogant. We forgot who gave us the breath. We forgot who wakes us up in the morning. We just forget the high thoughts they had of themselves. I'm increased in goods. I don't have need. I don't have need. I don't have need. I don't have any need. My necessities are taken care of. But there's one need that they overlooked, and that's the need of the soul. See, you, you have need for clothes, you can buy it. You have need for food, you can buy it. You have need for relaxation, you can buy it. And I love the parable in Luke, the 12th chapter. In Luke, the 12th chapter, said there was a rich man who, who, who was prosperous. He, he had a field and he, his, his, his harvest was great. It was so great that he had to build another barn. And, and, and he, he slapped his chest. 
Remind me of Jamaicans. You know, Jamaicans like to slap their chest when they get real dramatic. And he slapped his chest and said, Soul, I want you to just eat and just be merry and enjoy your goods. Ah, because you think you got it on your own. And the Bible said, that night, that night, his soul, not his harvest, his soul, not his money, his soul was required of him. The eternal part of you is what we neglect. And even unfortunately in our ministry and in our theology, we are focused on the outward part. We are focused on your cars, what you drive. We are focused on your houses, where you live. We are focused on the things that you put around your neck and the jewelry. But we seem to neglect the soul. Ah, we have equated prosperity on the outside and forgot about what's on the inside. Beloved, I wish above all that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Now... They had learning, and they took their learning as a religion. They had gifts, and they replaced their gifts for grace. And they had wit, and they took their wit and thought it was wisdom. And they forgot about the law of the Lord. They had become self-conceited, full of themselves. You can hear it in the theology and I am the master of my destiny and I determine where I go and I determine and you forgot about the sovereignty of God. The Bible said that I'm in charge. I sit on the circle of the world and I do it what I want and who can say what doest thou? Lord have mercy. He speaks and the world comes into being and he speaks and men live and he speaks and men die. He is totally in charge and we still can't handle it. I don't care how much tongues we speak in. We still grapple oh, with our little ego against the greatness of God. Ah, that's where the problem is, ladies and gentlemen. We still want a piece of the control. But I am the Lord, I change not. <laughs> well, not only that, but they say they were rich, but they were really poor. They made no provisions for their starving soul. Not only that, but they were blind. It's interesting. The whole text is filled with irony. Irony because God has a way of giving us a certain slap to wake us up. They invented, they discovered scientifically a certain eye salve to, to, to cure glaucoma and to cure cataracts. But the Bible said, Jesus said they were blind. It's amazing how you feel like you got it all together when God said you're not really together. Even though you've developed this school of medicine way before your time, way before Yale School of Medicine, way before John Hopkins University, these people were so advanced that they were curing diseases of the eyes that we still grapple with today. But the Bible said that Jesus said, I don't care how many cataracts you cure, I I don't care how many glaucoma you cure spiritually you're blind and the Bible said that the carnal man cannot comprehend the things of God because you're spiritually discerned and in the church we are impressed with super intelligence we hire people that can cross their T's and dot their I's we're impressed with the loquaciousness of long vocabulary words oh but we never check the soul we never check the character we never check their faith we never check whether they believe that God is for without God you can do nothing we still have the same problem. We believe that when people come with certain degrees, uh, and certain presentations, uh, that they're a little bit cut above. Uh, oh, but it's not the degree. It's how well we say yes, Lord. It's how well we conform to the things of God. The Bible said we were once in this world, uh, and the prince of this world uh, had darkened our eyes, uh, darkened our understanding, so that we couldn't understand who Jesus is. Uh, man with the PhD couldn't understand salvation until God came and opened up our eyes Lord have mercy aren't you glad that your eyes are open we don't rejoice over stuff like that anymore oh but it doesn't take much for us to read something and understand it because God took the scales off our eyes he said to Israel and Isaiah he said you have eyes but you can't see and you have ears but you can't hear and you have a mind but you can't understand because if you did you would be healed but thank God God, that our eyes are open thank God that our ears are unstopped so that we can receive the things of God come on Laodicea you're too fat 
too cute, too prosperous. You know where to go to get the new car. You know how to finagle to get the bling bling. You know how to do what you do so that people can say that you're blessed and highly favored. Oh, but when you go home at night, you're one step from cutting your throat. Suicide has increased in the pulpit. Oh, come on. Depression has become the disease of the church. When did we ever have a church filled with people with antidepressant? Something has happened to the church where we have forgotten who God is. Lord have mercy. We are wrapped up in ourselves, caught up in our tradition and we have forgotten the help of the Lord oh but he's still the God of the ages and without him without him without him without him I'm absolutely nothing without him I can't make it he is the God who rules he's a God all by himself he's a redeemer of the universe and there's no other God like him put your hands together and let me hear you Lord, just let me hear your praising. Blind. It says, here's the indictment. You're clothed and dressed up with your fine self, but you're really naked. They put a lot of emphasis on labels. You walk in and they say, I know what, I know what, what designer, I know what so and so and so and so. We put a lot of emphasis on the external. These people have become fat. They have become wealthy. They have become super intellects. They gathered in their churches, in the church at Laodicea, they sang their songs. They had their order of service. They even had their preaching. But Jesus was on the outside. We use the scripture all the time to talk to sinners, but it's not to sinners. Revelation 3 and 20 is not to win sinners. It's talking to the church of Laodicea. You come in and you sit and you have your church with your fine clothing and you have your church with your gold and you sit up because you're, you're, you're the head of this bank. You can write the check. You can go and use your black card and you cross your legs and you sit proudly. But behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice, oh, you have in church, but I'm not up in there. Oh, you're having praise and worship, but it ain't about me. Oh, you're jumping around, but it's not about me. Oh, you're even speaking in tongues, but you ain't thinking about me. But if you just open the door, I'll come in and I'll suck with you. And I'll have fellowship with you. And I'll reveal myself to you. And I'll impart my word to you. You're naked. The garment of justification and sanctification has not been worn. You're naked because even though you're rich on the outside, you're still full of guilt and pollution on the inside. Bible said all our righteousness is as filthy rags. And filthy rags there means, excuse the expression, but it's in the Bible. When you look at it, it means as a used sanitary napkin. So, so all your righteousness look just like that. <laughs> ah, so we have nothing to boast about. Paul said, I boast in him. Ah, and Paul knew what it was uh, to be full of himself. Uh, young man, young budding young man, uh, on his way to the top, uh, getting ready to be placed in the Sanhedrin. Uh, a young man who was well educated, went to the school of Hillel and sat at the feet of Gamaliel had the best professor a well-rounded education a Roman citizen and a Jewish born came from a special home came from the tribe of Benjamin Lord have mercy a 
cultured, educated boy, a boy that was full of zeal and passion. Oh, but when he met Jesus, listen to what he said. I count all things but tongue for the excellency and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I count all of my accomplishments as horse manure. Lord have mercy compared to what God has given me. Compared to the grace of God. Compared to what being redeemed. That cannot be in the same category. And until we lay all of our accomplishments at the feet of Jesus. Our titles and our importance. We walk in the room and we must have special recognition oh we ask for it and demand it we don't need to wait for it to be given to us the church has become a place of puffed up arrogant people oh we are dressed up but we are naked self conceited and self centered and here is the indictment oh you can get the loan from the bank you can drive the car every three years you can get a new car we do all kinds of things to dress up the outsider to make a statement of prosperity we base our anointing on our prosperity you're prosperous because you have you're anointed because you have but your soul is dry when a pastor can step out of his pulpit and go in the garage and blow his brains out something is wrong with our relationship oh but when you realize in him I live in him I move and in him I have my being then you straighten up yourself and tell him you're in charge God put your hands together I want to hear you praise I love Pastor Tatola's presentation it's the grace of God we forgot that we think it's the greatness of men, but it's the greatness, grace of God. Ah, we put our emphasis on personalities in the church. It's no more servants, but celebrities. We don't want servant preachers. We want celebrity preachers. We don't want servant ministers. We want celebrity ministers. If we don't have celebrity on the program, then we feel like we don't have a program. We have trained our people to only respond to celebrity. Those who are on television, those who have this and that. But we have forgotten that it's not celebrity, but it's servant. Jesus said, when he wrapped the towel around himself boys I'm getting ready to leave here and I just want to tell you one little last thing I'm getting ready to wash your crusty low down feet as a matter of fact one of you going to betray me and the other going to deny me but I'm going to wash your callous feet anyway because I didn't come to be served ah, but I came to serve can I get somebody to help me in here put your hands together and let me hear your praise we have turned it backwards come on Laodicea you got a mega church mega ministry mega praise team mega pews mega chandeliers mega whatever but there's a mega hunger for righteousness the need for God has been thrown out the window all we want is connections and if we have connections in a name we think we can make it but I got an indictment against you Laodicea ah you've forgotten about me you've forgotten that if you don't have me you really don't have anything I just want you to praise him right here we are gonna drive that spirit out of the 21st century church come on and help me praise it so what is the solution tell your neighbor there is a solution Oh, somebody help me praise him. And the Lord is demanding 
that the true leaders bring solution to the table. Tell your neighbor, bring solution to the table. You know what's going on. Don't be mute. Open your mouth and bring solution to the table. Go back and set your Laodicean church in order. Come on, any answer? Help me right here, Mama. Here is the council. Tell your neighbor, here's the counsel of the Lord. Here's the counsel of the Lord. And then I'm truly finished. The counsel of the Lord comes from verse 18. I, Jesus, counsel you fine with your fine self. I'm counseling you with your smart self. I'm counseling you with your degreed self. I'm counseling you with your well-traveled self. I'm counseling you with your satisfied self. I'm counseling you. And the word counsel there means I am, I am recommending. But it's, it's not just recommending as if I'm just suggesting. Because, you know, today when you counsel people, when I grew up in the church, they didn't counsel, they told you. I don't understand these, you know, they didn't, they, it was no sitting down, you know what I'm saying? And so your little girl, you need to just do this, that, 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 that. As a matter of fact, come on up here right here so I can lay hands and you're going to pray for two hours so you get it straight. We, we didn't have the luxury of having all these degrees in psychology, psychiatry, and Christian, whatever, to sit down for two hours and hear you lie. And then you walk out and do your own thing. We didn't have that luxury. We had that luxury. So don't take the word counsel here to mean that Jesus is just lightly suggesting. What he is, is commanding. You want to have a relationship with me and this is what you have to do. I command it to be so. What do you want us to do to kill this spirit of arrogance in the church? To pull down the stronghold of self-conceitedness. It's flaunting. Flesh flaunts. They come and sing and flaunt. They rock to the side and flaunt. They tickle the keys and flaunt. They preach a whole message and never open the Bible and you jump up and say hallelujah and flaunt. How are we going to put a stop to this? Oh, I know you all ain't going to help me because you like to be entertained. How are we going to gain back the power in the church? Gain it back. So that the next generation will have the right understanding of what church is all about. Tell your neighbor, get it back, get it back. Come on, our sons and our daughters ought to know it's not the Lexus and it's not the Mercedes Benz, but it's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And it's not the Michael Kors shoes and it's not the bling bling. We have made it back. But tell your daughter, it is a God who reigns. It's a God that can break the back of the devil and loose you from your madness. Come on and put your hands together. I need somebody to help. This is, this, is, this is the advice. This is the counsel. What's the counsel? What's the counsel? Isha Boseke. I want you all to meet my daughter Stand up baby She just moved That's the only daughter I have Had her since she was a little bitty And she's now here with her husband and her family but I just want to let you know, here's a counsel, baby. Here's a counsel. Here's a counsel. I want you to buy of me. <laughs> buy of me. 
gold tried is that what it says tried in the fire that thou mayest be what who want to be rich in here everybody who want to be rich stand up real quick want to be rich see that you lying because you know you want to be rich you should be on your feet you know you want to be rich come on let's not play the game you want to be rich you should be on your feet don't be like the devil player you want to be rich or oh, y'all want to stay poor y'all want to stay poor anybody, anybody? command you to go buy me gold now gold is a symbol in religion of the most precious religion a uh, metal rather which means that it is equal to the value of human beings and that's what's being used here the value of the soul okay which comes to make you rich but it's an irony it's an irony I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to go buy. Now, how can you buy something that's already been bought for you? Your, your, your salvation was purchased. Not with the corruptible gift of gold or silver, but what? With the incorruptible blood of Jesus Christ. So you don't have to buy your salvation. Tell your neighbor, you're already bought. You're already bought. Uh, that's why you can't go nowhere. You're already bought. <laughs> tried to backslide and came backslide because the Lord already bought you so the blood of Jesus went all over you ah he secured you on Calvary Lord have mercy it wasn't the blood of bulls or goats or turtle doves oh but it was the blood of Jesus and when he said it was finished no demon in hell can pluck you out of here his hand oh come on tell your neighbor you're in it you're in it you're in it he got you he got you he got you whether you happy or not he got you so it, it, what is he talking about? What is Jesus talking about? The word buy here in the, in the Hebrew coming from Isaiah 55 and 1, it means to break. It means to break the hunger. It means to stop the starvation of the soul. <laughs> Something you're going to do to stop your soul from being so poor while your clothes is so rich while your hairdo and your weave is about four hundred dollars but your soul it's a problem it's a problem we want to look like hollywood we want to look like those folk on the reality show we are focused on the outside but our souls desperately empty how you gonna break it? How you gonna break it? How you gonna break it? How you gonna break the hunger? How you gonna stop the loneliness and the emptiness after a good shout? After coming in the church and profiling, walking up and down the aisle and throwing your hair back? After you go through the subculture of the church and caught up in the tradition of nonsense, but you go home empty, frustrated, dry, and you have to go somewhere else to get relief? How you gonna stop it? stop it buy you know buy what what he's talking is the Lord is actually saying you're really beggars you're rich but you're a beggar you have science but you're really sick you have the banking system but you're really poor what, what, what does that mean Gold tried in the fire means something that's been melted down, refined, refined, purified. It has, it has gone through the test of, of, of severe heat and acid. It's been twisted and made that malleable. So the stuff around your neck that's real gold, it wasn't always looking like that. When, when it came out of the earth, it was a little piece of black dust, but it went through all kinds. The dross was taken off. The dirt was taken off. Heat, heat and pressure, pressure and heat, heat and pressure, acid, acid, beating it, beating it it it's been proven and when you pull it up you know you didn't have gold plated we have gold plated church 
fake church. I said it's fake. How you know it's fake? Let a little stuff drop on it and it turns black. You know when you have a gold-plated stuff on and you forgot to take it off and you go in the shower. And when you go in the shower, it's turned black. Ah, uh, ain't been through nothing. Can't stand the test. The real deal comes up under pressure. Lord have mercy. The real stuff shows up. When the heat is on, the heat is on, the heat is on. And we have produced gold-plated Christianity. That's why some come and some leave. There's a backdoor syndrome. Used to come, but now they're gone. Now they are, now they're Baptist Hindu. Or they're charismatic Hindu. Ah, they go to other people. Serenity Saturday and Serenity Sunday. And they're deep yoga. Ah, because it was fake from the beginning. Only those of us uh, who've been through the heat uh, and been through the storm uh, and we are still standing uh, we've been knocked down but we got right back up again because uh, we got the real goal uh, tell your neighbor I got the real goal uh, come on and put your hands together oh uh, yeah <laughs> hey. tell your neighbor this stuff is real honey I don't know what you're wearing but what I'm wearing is real to you go go by let's go shopping tell your neighbor let's go shopping Woo, Jesus Woo, God. we went after the fake stuff now let's go after the real stuff we went after personalities now let's go after Jesus we went after an outward show but let's go after spiritual growth come on and put your hands together I want to hear your praise in the house alright right. I just want to tell you what buying means it's, it's an ironic phrase can buy salvation so what do you mean by purchase you're going to purchase this new level of relationship and what are you going to use to purchase it you're going to trade in it's a trade you're going to trade in your self-righteousness that's what you're going to use to buy that's what you're going to use to buy you're going to trade in your self-reliance you're going to trade in that's what you got that's what you got now he's not looking for money he's not looking what he wants is for you to trade in it's, it's a buying you give me this and i'll give you that <laughs> you, you want my anointing trade in your anointing <laughs> your manufactured anointing you 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 want you want to grow and to do great things for god then trade in your little schemes and visions and your little concepts of what church is all about ah you want me to bless you then trade in your own bible and go back to the real bible oh you all don't hear me it's a trade-off i'm almost finished the church needs to trade off what they have created and go back to what God said come on buy now let's go shopping let's go shopping come on let's go shopping come on get it out get it out get it out get out your self-righteousness come on trade it in trade it in for the glory and the honor of God put your hands together I need somebody come on and help me neighbor this new place is gonna cost me something shepherd the answer the answer this new assignment is gonna cost you something what is it gonna cost you your own self-conceitedness your own self-reliance as a prophet talked about doing it in our own strength doing it in our own way following what mega church one mega church two and mega church three is doing going and spending two thousand five thousand dollars in the 
these conferences so we could copycat what we don't know oh but all you gotta do is trade in your self-seatedness trade in your selfishness your own righteousness and tell God give me what I need to get the job done put your hands together just want to hear your praise trade in trade off your worldly desires I I went somewhere the other day and it was a special occasion the place was packed and I heard about everybody else's accomplishments and Jesus was just introduced very briefly he was skimmed over everybody else got all that they need and I'm sitting there burning up temperature went high temperature went high and I'm saying to myself where am I it can't be the church and, I, and it bothered me all night long all night long and whenever anything bothers me the Lord wakes me up at four or five o'clock and then he gives me a word to explain it because he knows I'll be aggravating him for the rest of the day. So he gives it to me early and he gave me in Deuteronomy 32. He said, they esteem me lightly. <laughs> Just enough to get over. But it ain't no real honor or respect. Come on, church, trade it in, trade it in. We have our events and we don't even mention the name of Jesus. We have our preaching moments and we don't even quote the scripture. We give a little nice little story because we don't want people who are not church. Uh, we want them to understand, trust me, you got saved and they gave it to you straight. You were coming straight out the bar and somebody read you one scripture and Holy Ghost got a hold to you. Why do we have to change it up so that sinners can get saved? They're going to get saved anyhow. I said trade it in. Trade it in your modern methods. Trade it in your cute little visionary acts. Trade in all the stuff that you've come up with in order to catch the people. Those people are not yours. God says, I draw them. How can they come except the spirit? You don't need no drawing card. All you need to do is stand flat footed and say what thus saith the Lord. And the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, didn't he arrest you? Some of you didn't even get saved in church. One of my preachers got saved in the bar. She was a barmaid and God saved her. Oh, don't you underestimate who God is don't you try to be God trade it in let's go shopping what is this going to cost you trying to mimic somebody else your own self-sufficiency your hero worship your celebrity praise when somewhere else and at the end of the ceremony, they were playing. And since I don't know, since I don't know, because I don't listen to those things, because I feel like my mind should not be tainted. You know, certain things that guard my mind. Not that I can't listen to it because it's going to take me down. No, I don't, I don't want trash in my head. So I don't play it. So they're saying, she said, Pastor, did you know they were playing Beyonce's song at the end of the event? And then I really got disturbed because I just want you all to know that we are worldly. We are worldly. We can't go to a wedding unless we celebrate the reception the way the world celebrates it. Come on here. Everything we do, we have to take on the world. You understand? We have to have worldly music. We have to wiggle our hips because if we don't wiggle our hips, we didn't have a good time at the reception. And that same couple got divorced next week. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Why can't we have our own celebration? Why can't we bring meaning to the institution of marriage? Why do we have to cheapen it? Because the world says that's the way it should be. Trade it in, I said, trade it in. Trade it in. Trade it in. Every time I talk like this, you all get mad, but listen. 
Why do I need the world to determine my fashion statement? Trade it in. Michelle Obama took on Jackie Kennedy's fashion statement and had no sleeves. And we come in church and some of us should not, should not. There's too much extra stuff up under there, too much, too much stuff, too much stuff, too much. Too much stuff that's not defined, you know, it's not, at least those women who wear it, it's defined, you know, what muscle is what muscle. But when you put it on, we don't know what is muscle or fat, it, it's not defined. So we come in and we raise our hand with our own expression. It's distraction. When, 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 when you gonna come in the church half naked? Come on here. We have gotten whirly and crazy. Stuff so tight, so tight we can't praise the Lord. Walk up to the stage and we almost have to carry you. Because we with the stilettos and the tightness, we think you're gonna have an accident. Oh, come on, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't think that you have to look dowdy. Now you don't have to be 16 looking like you're 90. Oh, but we think the world has the right answer. We want to be affirmed by the world. We want to be approved by the world. We think the world should tell us how to eat, how to drink, uh, what to do with our bodies. Uh, and we bring that trade it in. Trade it in. Don't you know that your body is a temple? Ah, yeah, so she so uh, temple of the Holy Ghost, Lord have mercy. Don't you know that people ought to see God in you and they can't see God when your bosom is in the way? I'm almost finished now, I really am. There's a bosom ministry in the church, I don't know where we got that from, but it's a bosom ministry. It's a bosom ministry, it's a bosom ministry. We can't hear the words of the song because something just keep popping up, just keep popping up, just keep shooting out. Because somebody told you that you are sexy when your bosom and your cleavage is showing you. Somebody from the fashion industry that don't even like women told you. Ain't nothing like a well-dressed, classy woman. Well, you got to figure out what that is. Ah, you don't see, so your imagination is lit up. Ask any real man. He wants his imagination to be stimulated. That's what's wrong with men today. Their imagination went dead. They don't have to figure out. It's right in their face. But an interesting man will meet an interesting woman. He got to figure out. Now, let me see. Oh, my God. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. You don't have to wonder anymore. It's all hanging out. And somebody lied to you and told you that the more you show is the more attractive you are the devil is a liar trade it in trade it in come let's go shopping let's go shopping let's go to neiman marcus <laughs> hey god you help me today come on let's go to macy's there's a sale going on i don't mind going with you i'll put on my flats and walk with you i'll help you i'll help you i'll go with you and you save some money too but when you come out you'll be a reflection of the glory of god heads will turn Lord, something inside of you will just shine out. Trade in. The way we handle his money. We don't pay tithes and offering. Because we turned on the TV to some crack teacher that told us tithing was of the Old Testament. And because we had problems with money in the first place, we found it very attractive. So we just give, and, 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 and we don't have to pay just 10, you know, when we walk with the Lord, we can give more. That's a lot. If, you, if you're fussing about 10%, I know you ain't going to get no 20. Come on, let's not play games with your mind. If you're fussing about 10%, 
you the little bit of strength inside of you you're not gonna have enough strength to go to 30 percent it is said that 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 uh, some of the great men some like lord and taylors they were built on on religious men and 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 even some of the other men welch's grape juice and and even even um i'm um, not target the other one um one of those great stores well, i know no that other store but and it starts with a t anyway some of those some of those stores the owner started out by paying 90 percent tithes that's why those stores are still standing today so if you want to listen to people who want you to sell them atonement offering listen no tithes why do you need atonement when you're already redeemed Why are you sending first fruits? You understand? When your first fruit is Resurrection Sunday. He's the first fruit of them that slept. And he rose. So if there's any special offering you ought to bring, it's Resurrection Sunday. To celebrate that your God is not dead, but he is. Why are you taking on all of that Old Testament non-continuous stuff that was swallowed up in the new contract I've got a better covenant you don't need to celebrate atonement atonement is, is once a year and they still sinned but Jesus died and we're still living in grace come on trade in the poor erroneous theology trade it in trade in the need to find something else to spark some life did you hear so and so did you hear that no no did you hear the word it hasn't changed trade in your need for excitement and ask god to give you a settled peace for your journey with the lord you have become polluted tainted now go and trade in your self-reliance and follow, as the preacher before me said, follow the grace of God. Follow the word of God. It's not designed to bring hoopla. It's designed to bring you into the presence of the Lord. Some days you don't feel it, but you know you're in it. Some days the storms have knocked you down, but you know you're going to come out. Why? Because you have God on the inside. You have the word of God and you're standing on a firm foundation. The church has gone wild. Everybody got to prophesy to you and tell you you're blessed. You're blessed but naked in the shower. Oh yes you are. You're blessed to be saved. You could be on your way to hell. But you're blessed to be wanted. And who wants you? Jesus. With all of our crackness, he wants us. We don't want him, but he wants us. Lord, have mercy. We didn't look for him, but he searched us out. Oh, my God. We didn't draw him. He drew us. Stop talking about we found him. He was never lost. So, ladies and gentlemen, we ought to celebrate and come to God and say, God, I, we hear great truths and we go home and do it our way. We come to church and we write down got the iPad and whatever and we take it and we walk out of here and we go and do it the same way because you still feel like the strength is in yourself and then we come in with the fake gold-plated stuff knowing when to say hallelujah knowing how to look a certain way walking in dressed a certain way and carrying ourselves a certain way with this false sense of security and then we go home and we're miserable because what we heard was never practice. It's real. It works. In the darkest night, it works. On my worst day, it works. When I feel like I'm losing my mind, it works. And it only works, as the preacher said, when we apply it. Church is not a place for entertainment. It's not a theater. 
It's a place to learn how to live. I have started, Pastor Wilson, I started doing a teaching conference. The Lord said to do it throughout the five boroughs of New York. And I started my teaching conference on Tuesday night. What am I teaching? What is sin? So we got quiet in here? Wow. That's all right. I'm taking people back to the basics. Because we don't talk about sin no more. I told them what was, how sin was handled in the Old Testament. And then I told them how sin was remedied in the new. And I told them, Jesus didn't come for good people. He came for sinners. So don't be afraid to call yourself a sinner. Saved by grace. We throw sinners away. Jesus died for sinners. Why do I need a savior, you doctrine of inclusion people? Why do I need a savior? Because my genes and my makeup was made to sin. I inherited from my daddy. Adam and Eve, my parents, passed it through my genes. I was born an offense to God. I was born not wanting to obey God. It's in my bloodstream. You call it smoking and drinking. Those are symptoms of sin. We beat up the fornicator and knock down the adulterer. Those are symptoms of sin. Ah, it's in my nature to walk away from God. But when he hung on the cross, shed his blood, he changed my genes. Lord, have mercy. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. I said he changed my genes. He redeemed me. It's called regeneration. Come on, put your hands together. I want to hear your praise. Hey, God, you help me. I said, I want to hear your praise. Come on and stand on your feet and praise. I'm going shopping. Tell your neighbor, I'm going shopping. I'm going to buy me some real stuff now. I'm going to take off the fake. And I'm going after the real stuff. I dare you to praise him right here. Come on, and so. Maybe I know. Mananan and so. Oh, come on, there's a praise in the house. Come on, let's go shopping for the righteousness of God. For the word of God, for the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, for holiness, for communion, for fellowship. Come on, church, there's a praise in this house. I dare you to praise every Shake off the fake stuff. Tell your neighbor, I don't want the fake stuff. I don't want celebrity. I just want Jesus. I want his way. I want his word. I want his truth. I want his anointing. I want his favor. I want his blessing. Come on, praise him right now. Come on. I see stuff coming off of you right now. Open your mouth and give the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is a very strategic time in the history of the church. Tell your neighbor, this is the greatest time of the church. Because God is getting ready to get the real church together. I said there's a real church within the church. And the real church people go after the real stuff. And the real stuff is the righteousness of God. Not going through the motion in church and living something else. 
when I get home. And I'm not talking about blatant sin. I'm just talking about stubbornness, strong-willedness, arrogance, own wayness, not submitting our plans, our desires, our dreams, and our visions to the Lord. Going after stuff that will make us great and lightly esteem him. <laughs> we get all the credit and he's just a sidekick. But he wants to be the center, the utmost, and the utmost. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go shopping. Let's go after gold that's tried in the fire. His word has been proven. His spirit is not fake. His righteousness is not cheap. Go after something with value. That other stuff will not last you in the storm. And then when you don't go after it and the storm comes, then you leave the church and you go to some guru that gives you all this new age talk to get relief. Because you didn't go after the real thing in the first place. You were just a church goer. Because you can't taste this and leave it. Tell your neighbor, you can't taste this and leave it. You can't drink like this and leave it. So once you have received it, it is precious. More to be desired are they than gold. Even much fine gold. He is sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. If pastor will indulge me, I'm asking for all the leaders because you are now responsible to take your people to really what matters. You're responsible to clear away the dross and the fake and take them to the real thing. You're responsible to come out of the fake yourself and model what really matters. A life of righteousness, a life of holiness, a life of power, a life of fresh anointing, a life of insight. Shemo Kumans. Life of vision. I was sleeping, got up, got up in the morning. And the Lord said to me, James has uterine cancer. Jump up. Who is James? Who has uterine cancer? And in the dream, I had my hands on the belly of the person, no face. And the Lord said, lay hands on the belly and stop the cancer. When I woke up, I said, but who is James? Who is James? I got a call from my church life person and said, so-and-so James is on the way to the hospital and they think it's ovarian cancer. The Lord said, get on the phone right now before she goes under and stop the advancement of the enemy. And I prayed for her. At 4.30 she had the surgery. And she called me back later. She said, it's benign. No cancer. That's not only for me. That's for you too. I would, I would rather trade that in than to walk around and have a title. I would rather have that. Than for you to walk around and call me some dumb name. I'm trading in all my self-importance. I'm trading in all my imaginary thoughts. Because I want to infiltrate the kingdom of hell and put a stop to the enemy's advantage.
touch me. Come on and put your hands together. Just want to hear your praise. There's a Huria man Sante. There's a Shikaman Anamote. There's a Humbum Bonsa. Rohoskete Yansu. Somebody help me praise him in the Osa. Come on, Mama Mandan. Come on, Mama Mandan. to move quickly it's a quick move if you're slothful don't even come at this altar and don't come looking pitiful come with your hands up in the mighty name of Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus I release you now to bring back true gold to the church in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, uh, the true teaching of Jesus Christ, I command the fake and the fluff to come away from this organization. Go on back to the book and go on back to the anointing. I release you to stand flat footed and declare the whole counsel of God. No compromise. I rebuke the spirit to be impressed. I rebuke the spirit to be connected. The Lord said, you have to be connected to nobody but me. And I will refresh you. I said, I will refresh you. And I will lead you. And I will anoint you. Anoint you to lay hands on the sick. Anoint you to speak to mountains. Anoint you to speak to demons. I need some demon chasers. I need some demon chasers. I need some demon chasers. Demon chaser. Demon chaser. Demon chaser. Hey, come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. We're afraid of witchcraft. I rebuke the spirit of fear. Step up in it. Your very atmosphere I place you in a certain location That's been tied up with spirits The Lord said pull it down Pull it down I command you to pull it down 
you go back and cleanse the atmosphere and I'm getting ready to break those doors down for the end time in gathering 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 now praise him like you lost it praise him like you believe it Sweetie, stand up, stand up, stand up. No, you've been here too long now. This affliction is is been here too long. And your time is up. I said your time is up. I want your strength back. Come on, Ania. So you foul spirit. You asked to stay, and I tell you no. Time is up. Yes. You asked to stop her, and I tell you no. You asked for her, and in the name of Jesus, you can't have her. Manana, come side, come, come on. You open your mouth. Check. Come on, open your mouth. Come on and help me praise him. Come on and help me praise him. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. All right, all right. Now listen. The Holy Spirit told me to pray for leaders and he also said he has released and I'm not playing and I'm not being fickle nor manipulative. I heard him say monies that were slated to come to you just like the angel told Daniel the first time you prayed the Lord released it but the Prince of Persia held it up but I went and got help to release the answer and some of our monies were held up the enemy blocked it couldn't find your address mail got lost person lost your telephone number or they were supposed to give it to you and they forgot all kinds of manipulation in the spirit realm but today it's broken. There's a flow. I said there's a flow for money. I know what I'm talking about. Shamata! You foul spirit from hell. You can't hold it no more. You're not in charge. Come on and praise God. For the silver is mine. And the gold is mine. And I'm going to shake the heavens. Come on and praise him one more time. Oh, you don't believe it. I said, you don't believe it. You act like you don't believe it. Somebody should be praising him. Thousands of dollars have been blocked. Come on and praise God. Hey, Eva, so. Hey, hey, hey. 
a flow. It's a flow. There's a flow. Dear oh God, you help me. There's a flow in the house. That means that you can't act like you're in another space. You gotta move quickly. I need 40 people to give me a hundred dollars. I don't want you to think about it. 39, because I'm number 40. Make your checks payable to raw.
much ago. Dr. McCullough just confirmed it. We have heard of too many pastors committing suicide, suffering depression, suffering from all of these psychological anxieties. But the devil is a liar. And the Bible is clear. He said, I give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And there have been leaders who've been heavy. But today there's an exchange. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And I believe leaders, if you would take a moment and praise God, the people can't get free until the leaders get free. The people can't be relieved of depression until the leader get relieved of depression. But leaders, I know you're tired and exhausted, but if you can just for a moment take your label off, take your title off, and just give God the best praise that you know how from all of your heart, you're going to trade that heaviness for the garment of praise. We got 30 seconds, and whoever your pastor is, whoever your spiritual mother, your spiritual father is, you're going to praise God for your leader. And leaders, you praise God for yourself. The leader go to God, and the people lift the leader before God. On the count of three, we got 30 seconds and we're going home. Everybody, one, two, three, five. Come on, leaders. Come on, leaders. Get it off of you. Get it off of you. Get it off of you. Don't take it back to your church. Don't take it back to your ministry. Don't take it back. Don't take it